I honestly forgot about his, I forgot because I'm so used to seeing him hitting and knowing he was coming back from the elbow. But in my brain, I wasn't thinking about the fact that he should be in their starting rotation if he didn't have the elbow thing. Yeah. And that's just so strange to me because when you went through that starting rotation, my brain was thinking, yeah, that's really scary. And thank goodness the Yankees aren't facing that in this World Series because it would be a lot different. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm one of your hosts, Stacey Gotsoulias. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app today and use code Locked On MLB to win $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. With me, as usual, my co host, Brian McKeon. Brian, it's the day of the World Series. We're here. I guess so, right? It is the day of the World Series. Scary. That's uh, crazy. Crazy to think about. Before we get started, don't forget, subscribe to Locked On Yankees on whichever podcast and platform you prefer. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We are about to hit 7,500 subscribers. We are within 20. And I wanted to do that before the World Series started. So we have a few hours. So if you aren't subscribed, We're click the there. button and do it. Also, like our videos, hit the bell so you're notified when our videos go live. We're going to make our World Series predictions on today's show. We're going to discuss some of the fun human interest stories surrounding the Yankees heading into the World Series. But first, let's preview the first three, eh, two and a half pitching matchups of <laughs> the World Series because we don't quite have a Dodgers opponent in game three, but we know the other pitchers. Yeah, I guess the Dodgers are going to go with a, I feel like it's going to be a bullpen game, right? Because who is the other starter? Right. They really only have two starters um, healthy, which is crazy to think about because their rotation is so insanely deep. If healthy, like if right. healthy, if healthy, this would be their rotation right now. Shohei Otani, Tyler Glasnow, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Uh, it would be Jack Flaherty and then Clayton Kershaw. Right. That's an absurd <laughs> top five. Right. Instead, the only people available are Jack Flaherty and Yamamoto, mm -hmm. which is crazy to think about, which I guess out of those five, probably they're two worst pitchers. Not that that's saying that they're bad, but I mean, I, you can argue Clay, Clayton Kershaw in the postseason is not anything to write home about, but mm. still, he still is one of the all-time greats. Um, so they've got nobody available out of their starters, um, and Yamamoto is really a half a starter because he can't give them length either. So... The Yankees, I mean, we've said this a while, but if they're going to have, if, if there is an advantage, they have a clear cut advantage in this series. And we could, we can discuss lineups. I think the Dodgers a little deeper, but regardless, lineup is back and forth. Bullpen, I think, is back and forth. They're, each aspect is debatable. The one aspect the Yankees have the Dodgers beaten for sure, in my opinion, is the bullpen, is, is the starting rotation. There's nothing the Yankees have. The Yankees are way better than them starting rotation wise. Stacey, if the Yankees are going to win this series, they have to outpitch the Dodgers when it comes to starting or starting pitchers. They yes. have to. Yes. And right now, you look at these matchups for game one, two, and three. The Yankees really don't have much of an excuse in these games. Every game, they have the better starter going. Yes. And it's definitive. There's no argument here. Yes. You have Garrett Cole going against Jack Flaherty. Flaherty, who's what, in his 12th start as a Dodger? Maybe 15th? Um Hasn't started a lot, and he's pitched. He pitched well when he first got to LA, and he's kind of cooled off since. Um, Garrett Cole obviously had a terrific year once he came back coming back from the injury, and I think it also says to, to note too. And we said this since Garrett Cole came back, it is like Garrett Cole is in the middle of his season right now. He's mm -hmm. basically at what the All Star break right. of what a normal pitcher would be at. So he's very fresh when it comes to innings on his arm. Um, to me, Stacy, it's hard to argue. If they're going to win this series, they have to outpitch them when it comes to the starting rotation. They have to. Right. Um, it's interesting because they do have Walker Bueller, but Bueller has not been good at all. At all. So they don't trust him to be a starter. And which is crazy to think about the fall from grace that he that, that guy has had. Right. And it's so funny because you mentioned Otani, and I honestly forgot about his. I forgot. Because I'm so used to seeing him hitting and knowing he was coming back from the elbow. But 
in my brain, I wasn't thinking about the fact that he should be in their starting rotation if he didn't have the elbow thing. Yeah. And that's just so strange to me because when you went through that starting rotation, my brain was thinking, yeah, that's really scary. And thank goodness the Yankees aren't facing that in this World Series because it would be a lot different. I think what I find interesting, we thought maybe they would flip Rodon and Schmidt. They're not doing that. They're having Rodon pitch in Dodger Stadium. Clark Schmidt will pitch game three, the first game in Yankee Stadium against that TBD guy. We don't know who's opening. He's been great be, this year. Yeah, he's been great. Uh, but how do you feel about the order of Rodon and Schmidt? I mean, I guess if it's not, what's the saying? If it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. And it's not like Rodon was necessarily poor in Cleveland, right? I feel like we might have given that no that notion off a little bit that he wasn't good in Cleveland. He's better at home. I think he's better at home and he's more comfortable at home. That's not to say that he's bad in Cleveland per se. Uh, he's, or he's bad on the road, right? I think he'll be fine in Dodger Stadium. Uh, my problem with it's not Dodger Stadium, it's navigating the Dodgers lineup. That's so difficult right. to get around. Um right. that's the issue. And I do think because of the Dodger lineup being so difficult to navigate and because of Rodon, you know, I hate to be this way, but kind of being a ticking time bomb, when mm. one little thing goes wrong for Rodon, he tends to lose it. And when he loses it, he loses it. Um, yeah. To me, if one little thing goes wrong and then the crowd gets involved and then they keep rolling and rolling and rolling and creating this tumble effect, um, the snowball effect, I I'd rather them create that 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 scenario in the Bronx where the crowd won't start going crazy and it'll be a little more dull. Whereas opposed to in Dodger stadium, if the crowd gets into it and it start, it can be a little more tough to navigate that on the road as opposed to at home. Right. Um, that's why I preferred Rodon in more of his comfort zone at home. I don't hate it though. Right. I, I don't, I don't hate it. And I, I do think going with a bullpen game on the road in a game three is a really tough spot to be. in, And I think they leave it as a TBD for this reason. If by some scenario, I think you're going to see Bueller more than likely in that game. Hmm. And I think the only way you don't see Walker Bueller in that game is if somehow LA comes back to New York with a 2-0 series lead. Hmm. If they win both games in New York, I think they'll come back to in, in LA. They'll come back to New York thinking we can give them this game. Mm -hmm. We can lose this game. As long as we take one of these games in New York, we're going back to LA with a 3-2 lead. And I think they take their chances winning two out of the, one of the next two in their home stadium. I think if they're down, if they're tied one one, they 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 throw Bueller for sure because they think they need the, they need the better the better matchup. I think they think he's a better pitcher, he's a starter. And if they're down two zero, they have to start Bueller or do whatever they possibly can to preserve the series at that point. Especially yeah. being down two zero going on the road. Um, that's just the way I feel. I don't hate not starting Rodon in game three. I just think he's, he's, he would have been better suited for game three, but it's not an awful move. Yeah. I don't think it's an awful move either. Um, you know, I saw some people talking about the points that you made about Rodon and maybe, maybe it would be better for him to pitch at home. And as you said, I just don't want a little thing to spiral into a big thing when he's pitching. I know that Kike Hernandez has good numbers against him, mm -hmm. although Kike has good numbers against Cole as well. He's just one of those annoying guys who could do nothing all year, but all of a sudden in the playoffs, he wakes up and he becomes Babe Ruth. And it's just so frustrating. If he were on our team doing that, we'd love it. But if it's against our team, it's the worst thing in the world. And it's always been against our team. Right. Right. I mean, it's always been, he's always been a bugaboo, right? I'm getting you on the Red Sox for a couple of years. I mean, He's tough. Yeah. He's annoying. <laughs> You're annoying, Kike Hernandez. He knows that, though. And he loves that. And that kind of, like, fuels him a bit. And I wish – I kind of wish the Yankees had a player like that. I wish someone would adopt that persona for the Yankees. Like, the guy that you don't really see much out of him in the regular season and then the playoffs, he's a pain in the butt. Anthony Volpe is kind mm. of stepping up into that role just a little Maybe. bit. Maybe. I don't want him but, to be that role, though. I want him to be better than Kike. No, I want him to be good in the regular season. I want yeah. him to remember how he did in playoffs – and continue and it over. into the regular season in 2025. I'm switching gears just for a second. I thought this was funny. Um, I was looking at an article on Yankees.com, and it was talking about Tommy Canely and how many change-ups he threw against the Guardians because he threw a lot 
it said that <laughs> the right-hander has thrown 48 consecutive change-ups dating back to game two of the AL Championship Series against the Guardians. And he joked that he will eventually throw something other than a change-up, but right now that's what's working for him. I mean, I guess so. I think it doesn't keep hitters very um, off balance like you'd like to, but it's working for him. So until yeah. it's not. Right. He said, I would say it's just being in the moment and sticking with my strength. If you're going to beat me, you're going to have to beat me with the change up uh, so far or since, you know, Cleveland, he tossed four scoreless innings over three appearances in games two, three, and four of the ALCS limiting Cleveland to only three hits. And he said that he did shake off one suggestion and it was a slider. <laughs> Except usually what's weird is the change up usually becomes more effective after seeing a fastball. Right. And he's right. just throwing fastball. It's so strange. And he has a good yeah. fastball, too. Yeah. I'm sure he'll throw it at some point Let's in hope. the series. Yeah, I think so. So we're here. It's the World Series. And all these videos are coming out. You know, all these hype videos. Uh, videos of them behind the scenes. It was media day on Thursday. So they were showing them taking pictures and stuff. And for a brief moment, I was looking at Juan Soto. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, we have Juan Soto. It was almost like I forgot that we had Juan Soto, even though I saw him hit that big home run the other day. And it just really hit me that we have Juan Soto in the World Series on our side. It's 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 incredible. It really it's it's so crazy to even consider. <laughs> right. We've been watching him all season and we felt this way at the beginning of the season when the season started. We all thought, oh, my God, the Yankees have Juan Soto and he was good right away. And you're just thinking, wow, this is amazing. But having him in the playoffs, having him do what he did against Cleveland to get the Yankees into the World Series. And he's got a signature moment. That's what's special, too. He's got a signature moment. Yeah, it's already there. Already happened. And hopefully he'll have more in the World Series. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button on our videos. Hit the notifications so you know when our videos go up. You can also join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from us. You can text us questions, comments, reactions to the games. We send you the lineups, roster moves, any kind of breaking news so you don't have to check social media. There's a 14-day free trial. Coming up, guess whose idea it was for the Yankees to wear all those mint accessories? Price Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps, on Price Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. You want to play Price Picks alongside Drewski, Joe Budden, and MMA champ Sugar Sean O'Malley? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries in some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Prize Picks puts their members first. So with all withdrawals, they're fast, they're safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quickly as 15 minutes. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code one word locked on MLB to get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code one word locked on MLB on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks. Run your game. And don't forget that you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So, Stacey, if you've noticed the Yankees' accessories this uh, season, it's been really consistent for the most part. Really cool shoes. They've upgraded the sneaker catalog for sure um, and the cleat catalog. I mean, Judge wears a new pair of Jordans pretty much every game at this point. Jazz has some crazy Jordans that he wears. Rizzo's got some really cool cleats. I personally love that. But there's been a different vibe when it comes to the, uh, I guess, gear going on. Uh, you want to explain this to us? Yeah. We had spoken about this because we noticed that more players were wearing that mint green that kind of matches the Statue of Liberty. And we were wondering why this was happening. And, you know, not... Wondering why, because we were angry about it. Wondering why, because, wow, the Yankees are actually cool and doing things that are not so normal and not so strict and not so, boring. like, you know, boring and rigid, mm -hmm. right? So this is, or was, Aaron Judge's idea. And I love this because if he decides to wear the mint green, other guys will follow suit and wear the mint green with him. It's not an everyday thing and it's wristbands, it's batting gloves, 
Uh, some of the guys have gloves that are green, like the Statue of Liberty. Uh, some pitchers have that. And I just love this because we spoke about it on, I believe it was on Thursday's show. We were talking about how relaxed they are going on planes now. They're not forced to wear a suit and tie. They can wear whatever they want, apparently, from what the pictures look like. Some guys choose to wear suits, but none of them are buttoned up. You know, they're wearing mm -hmm. them loose and not so constricted and not so rigid. So I'm just loving this because they're not the Yankees of yesteryear. They're definitely not the 70s or 90s or even the 2010 Yankees. These are the 2020s Yankees. And this vibe, I can definitely get with it. <laughs> Hopefully they start allowing facial hair soon because I hate that. Other, rule than, other than mustaches. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that rule, too. It's it's 2024. Let the guys grow beards. Yeah. Um, it's also so interesting. Wait, it's also interesting that they let uh, Cole you know, when he first came over, he had that bob. Yeah, but it wasn't the long hair. hair that he had in Houston. But it was still it a lot longer did. than they normally allowed Yankee players to have. You know what? You're gonna give me you're gonna give me three hundred and thirty million dollars. You're gonna let me wear my hair the way I want to wear it. Like, but then you he know, cut it. But then he cut it for his. I was worried before 2023 started because he yeah. cut his hair short, and I thought, oh no. And then he won the Cy Young unanimously. So yeah. they're goes my stupid feeling about oh no he's gonna ruin everything because he cut his hair meanwhile he came out and totally shoved but he has that bushy hair back and i hope that they allow other players to have that now let's just quickly i don't mind beards we've spoken about this but i don't i don't want a zz top beard i don't yeah maybe, I, I, maybe or... a little maybe a little bushy but nothing really like if you get like past this or brandon marsh oh yeah yeah yeah, no. I mean Brandon. Brandon Marsh looks like he grows up in. He grew up in the marsh. Um, <laughs> the, he, he he looks like he washes terrible. his hair in the marsh. He washes a, so he wets his hair eighteen times per game. He does yeah. it every half inning, which is crazy. Um, yeah, I think that's nuts. I don't mind it though. I, I don't think we should be having rule. It's twenty twenty four. I don't think there should be rules on how you need to be groomed. I think not, I think the grooming the rule. I think we're gonna see it. I'm going to predict this. I think within the next five years, two, two seasons, I say by 2026, you're going to see a difference in the facial hair. Rules. There should be. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's not the military. It's a baseball yeah. team. It's not. Um, and George isn't alive anymore. Let's just get rid of that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I, I like that. And I think the the plain attire has a lot to do with, I'm telling you those, those sports science studies that have been out saying that the players you sleep better on the plane. You're more relaxed for the flight. You end up being looser. I mean, it, it's been a whole bunch of studies they've done. And now you see it all. It's all over all sports, right? It's all hockey, bat. None of them fly with like suits on anymore, which is again, why were we ever flying with suits on? Right. No one flies uh, with no, suits on. And no one cares. Only like, the pilots yeah. wear suits. <laughs> and even that's weird. Like, right. Well, <laughs> but it just, yeah. So I, I have no problem with uh, any of these rules, to be honest with you, any of them changing at all. Let now, speaking, speaking of pilots, nice segue there. Yeah. Clark Schmidt's father has been a pilot for Delta for over 20 years, and he got to fly the Yankees chartered two planes, one for the team and one for the family and friends. So he flew the family and friends flight out to L.A. How cool is that? Like, mm -hmm. and like, imagine your dad being a pilot and you become a major league baseball player. How yeah. crazy is that? Yeah. Um, that's going to be one of the more interesting jobs you could possibly have, right? I would think, yeah, I would think so. Um. I, I couldn't imagine doing it. You know, you have to have really good eyesight to be a pilot and you have to really not, you can't have my brain to be a pilot. I get distracted like crazy and I, there's no way that I could but, ever. But, but what would you be distracted by? Because you're up in like, there's nothing. What would you see? A, a cloud and, and, and who's focused? Well there's, well, there's two things you have to have, they call it a sterile cockpit. So once the door closes and the flight, the flight begins, you only talk about the flight. You go through the checklists. You do all of the commands that you need to do to fly. And you can't talk about superflu superfluous things. Okay. So I couldn't that. do that. I would get in real trouble with that. So that's one reason. And then I would get distracted by anything. I'd want to talk to my co-pilot. I would want to talk to a flight attendant who was bringing me my food. You know what I mean? So there's no way I'd be able to be a pilot. <laughs> All right, cross that off the career, the future career dream list. Now, this isn't the first time that Dwight Schmidt has flown for the Yankees because in 2023, Delta surprised him with an assignment to fly his son's team down to Tampa when they were playing Rays in August oh, of 2023. Cool. 
Yeah. So he's done it before. Dwight yeah. Schmidt sounds like a player in like the sixties. Right. Right. Yeah. Like he like like he played third base or not. Well, not I guess Mike Schmidt is too close, but like right. a, like like a gritty player back in the day. He hit like two sixty five, but yeah, he, he could hit. You know, he could he could play. That that's what I view uh, Dwight Schmidt as. Yeah, he said, it's just different when you're able to do something in my profession to help them out in their profession. It was a magical experience. It was absolutely one of the most fun things I've gotten to do. And he was giving cool. people high fives coming off the plane. The uh, Someone from the families was recording as uh, Captain Smith was high-fiving everyone getting off the charter plane. Also, funny, there was a clip from, I want to see it was... I think it was NBC LA, which is, I used to work with KNBC and they had video of the Yankees stepping off their charter plane. I could not tell who it was, but two of the players, as they were making their way down the stairs, cause it's that kind of, they're not going in a jet way. They're going down the stairs. They were rocking the stairs to rock their teammates on the stairs. They were at the, at the top of the stairs. I couldn't tell who it was. There were two players who did it and they stood at the top and started rocking the stairs and the other guys were like, <laughs> you're muted. I don't know why. I guess my mic uh, held down too long. That's great. That's classic. I love that. But you know what that means? They're completely, loose. these guys look so loose and relaxed. There's Ready a lot go. of talk about how close they all are. Like the 2009 team, you know, mm -hmm. the 2009 team, they hung out together. They had part, they had parties and went to parties together and did things together. And they had team bonding experiences. And this team feels the same way. They always talk about how they feel like a family. And I just love how not uptight they look. They look so loose right now and they're relaxed. Ready. And they're just like, it's a series. Let's get this done. Like it's I'm not them being like. Are. I think we are. I think all of us, you, me, the collective fans, we're all more more nervous than the players are right now. And that's, I think that's you know what? I think I'd rather it that way though. Yes. And I think that's actually good. I think that's actually good. So coming up next, we're going to give our predictions for this world series that the Yankees are in. I still can't believe the Yankees are in the world series. I, I'm going to keep saying this until it's over, but I can't believe the Yankees are in the world series. <laughs> Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season off with a big return on FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place all of your bets. Guys, everything is getting going. You can get your World Series features right in. Yankees currently plus 110 to win the World Series. Dodgers minus 130, paying a little bit more of a tax than the Dodgers, probably because of home field advantage. Either way, it's very, very close odds wise. And you can get all your same game parlays in, who to get a hit, uh, no run first inning, all the popular ones. They're all available on FanDuel Sportsbook. And here's what you'll get too. When you get started, you'll get $200 in bonus bets, all guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's all available on FanDuel.com. And remember that you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. So, Stacey, I just mentioned um, the gambling odds for this series. The Dodgers are a minus 130 favorite. Yankees are plus 110. If you place a $100 bet on the Yankees, you win $110. You place a $100 bet on the Dodgers, you need to lay $130 to win $100 on the Dodgers. I think probably that line is cooked in due to the Dodgers having home field advantage. That gives them a, a little bit more of an edge. But basically, you're 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 talking about pretty even odds um in this world series i hate being this guy but you know how do you see it going what how do you see it going like 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 what's your prediction i hate giving predictions on my own team i just i you know what am i gonna say you're right dodgers right. And four no I, i'm gonna pick the yankees i just well, I'm it's, fu it, too. it's funny because you guys are going to see the crossover that I did with Jeff for Locked on Dodgers after this. I scheduled it for seven in the morning on Friday. So you can watch both of these episodes. I actually said Dodgers in six. Oh, wow. Interesting. Surprise. Yeah. But as I've gone through the day and I've watched some things and I've read up on some things and I'm feeling a little more confident in my Yankees and I think still six, but I can see the Yankees winning in six. 
Okay. So in yeah. LA, celebrate. I mean, that's not a bad place to celebrate. I guess you get. Oh, they've celebrated in LA before. Yeah. Um. Interesting. I think Yankees in six as well. I don't think this goes seven for some reason. Right. Um. It doesn't feel like that. But I, I, I think, think, you're think you're gonna have. That. I think you're gonna have a few dramatic games though. Yeah, it feels like that kind of a series. I don't think you're going to have an easy series to watch. I don't think it's going to be a cruise. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think there's going to be any blowout. I don't think it's going to take on the the, the personality that the uh, the Mets series had. I don't. I think it's going to be not a lot of blowouts, a lot of close games. Bullpens are going to mean a lot. Um, Look out for Tim Hill versus Otani. That's going to be a huge matchup. Um it's going to come down to to gutsy play at gutsy times um big hits and i mean it, it sounds it sounds ridiculous right because it's the story is all this time and, and we get it but it's the truth if your star players perform that's how you'll win the series now yes you're going to need your depth guys to 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 you know perform at the right time you're going to need glaber and volpe and all those guys to get the big hits of course but regardless you need performances out of Judge, out of Soto, out of Stanton to win this series. Your star players need to perform at the biggest times. That's just how you win series. And the Dodgers are going to need the exact same thing. Navigating that lineup is close to impossible, especially that starting that starting like five is crazy with Muncie and Freeman and Betts and, and Otani. It's, just, it's crazy. Um, the big thing I think to watch out for is the health of Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman yeah. wasn't playing towards the end of the NLCS. That's how hurt he was. And apparently the uh, low ankle sprain that he has is pretty bad, and it's just enough for him to hit. Um, so that's a, 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 a thing the Yankees might have got lucky with. Because if Freeman is seriously hurt, Freeman's a player that could really take advantage of the short right right field porch in Yankee Stadium. He's a, a very big, powerful lefty hitter. I actually wanted the Yankees to really heavily pursue him when he was leaving Atlanta. And I think it would have proven to be a great move because he hit he's hit wonderfully in, in LA since he's gotten there. And Rizzo has not been the same player. Um, so I think having him hurt could be a huge benefit to the Yankees. And I mean it again, these all these points all sound obvious, but you know, they are they they are what's gonna help you win. You gotta neutralize Otani. You just you, you have to. You gotta make sure he's up with no one on base. You gotta make sure if he's gonna hit a home run. He's going to hit a solo home run <laughs> yeah. um, because historically he does kill Yankee stadium. He's great at Yankee stadium. You just got to be able to do those things. I also think he does have a little bit of a, of a chip on his shoulder when he pitches at the Yankees, just because they trade, they chased him for so long. They wanted him for so long. He likes to stick it to them a little bit. Um, you just, you got to control the damage where you can against the Dodgers. You really, yeah. you, you can't allow the big inning. Yeah. And they, and they're big on the big inning. You know, they, 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 they are that team that um, every game is able to go out there, and when they have a big inning, it's a four, it's a five run spot. You have to neutralize them to two, to two runs. You, you can't let the game get away from you. A lot of that happened with the Mets series. You can't let it be that way. And again, like we said before, you can debate the bullpens, you can debate the road, you could debate the lineups. You can't debate the starting pitching staff. The Yankees have the better staff. So in the one spot and the three elements of the game, in the one spot where you know you're better than them. You better be better than them. So, you know, it's going to depend on how the starting pitchers go, too. I don't want it to go to seven. I don't, I don't think, think it I will. can. I don't think I can mentally handle a seven game series. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of interesting predictions. Um, I follow Laura Albanese from Newsday, and she's on SNY, and she covers the Yankees and the Mets. And most of the writers from Newsday are all picking the Yankees. That's and I good. think four out of the five picked the Yankees in seven. And I believe she picked the Yankees in six, which I was I kind of, sh I was shocked about. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> whenever, whenever a bunch of media pundits take the same team, it's never that team that wins. No. Cause that's what happened Ever. in the subway series. Everyone was picking the Mets to win and look what happened there. I don't like so, it. Yeah, that always makes me feel uncomfortable. It doesn't always go because I mean, people were picking the Yankees to beat the Phillies in 09. So, you know, I'm not going to get that worried about it. But I don't want them, you know, at least none of them is, none of them are picking Yankees in four. I'm seeing that from some people. I'm like, have you I not have, watched that, the crazy. Dodgers? That's insane. Who's your, who's your impact player? 
if you're gonna pick one, and I don't mean impact player, like don't don't, don't give me an obvious a Juan Soto. Don't don't give me that. I mean, who's your Hideki Matsui mm. in 09? Who's your player that's gonna have a big moment that's gonna change the series? Jazz Chisholm. I don't hate it. He's been at nothing in the postseason. Yeah, he did get that hit off Class A, and it was a solid hit. And yeah. I was kind of like, oh, man, why does this have to be at the end of everything? Because now they're going to have all these days off and everything. But I, I, think don't Jazz, I think Jazz might have a big moment that might help the Yankees win a game. I like but that. An important game, like, like a one. crucial game. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to go Luke Weaver. Hmm. I think he has a massive series. I think he gets used for length. Um. I like that he was joking around that they asked him uh, today at media day if he if he were to be anything other than a baseball pitcher, what would he have done for a living? And he said, uh, underwater basket weaver. Yeah. I like the looseness that he has. Yeah. Um, he, he also geeks out on fantasy football and golf. Yes. Yeah. So Luke Weaver or um, Glaber Torres. Yeah, I can see Glaber. Also being, he's been in, great all post. I mean, he has. Great. When you think about it, he has been an impact player because he's gotten on base ahead of people before they hit home runs, and he's scoring on plays, and he's already made a pretty big impact. And you know, I keep saying it, and I said it in the comments of his Instagram uh, post that he made the other day. Just kudos to him for turning his season around, working oh, yeah. out during the All Star break, and figuring out what to do. And he's just been really great. Unbelievable in the so far. Really unbelievable. Yeah. Um, th there is and there was so much um reason for him to give up this mm -hmm. year on how the, the, the fan base was killing him and his own team was giving up on him and everything. He has been so good, really, since they put him in the leadoff spot. He's been an impact player, especially in the postseason, he's been terrific. Yeah. So we're here. It's the day of the world series. Good luck, to everybody. Re to recap. We think the Yankees are going to be okay. <laughs> and we hope, we hope you think the Yankees are going to be okay as well. Let's just all breathe in, breathe, breathe out. In. It'll be okay. Even the cats, even the cats getting into it. Even, even Sweet Pea is getting into this. Do you think the Yankees are going to be okay? Now she's quiet, of course, when I ask her that question. So thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On MLB podcast. Prepare for, well, we're here. The World Series is here. And poor Sully, the uh, Red Sox fan who pulls for the Giants, has to talk about the Yankees and Dodgers for the next possibly six or seven games. He will have it covered every single day. The link to Locked On MLB is in the description, so you don't need to search. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I will be with Sully on Friday's show. So if you want to see that, go to the Locked On MLB feed. And make sure you check out the Locked On Yankees postcast right here on the Locked On Yankees podcast feed, audio, as well as streaming on the Locked On Sports New York YouTube channel. Get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Yankees, excuse me, Locked On Yankees postcast. And don't forget, we're going live after the games during the World Series, Friday night, Saturday night. You get extra Locked On Yankees shows. How lucky are you guys? Every day, guys. Every day. Every day. So that'll do it for this edition of Locked On Yankees. I'm Stacey Gonsulius. And I'm Brian McKeon. We'll catch you after game one.